Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. A hearty welcome to each one of you, my dear, dearest brothers and sisters. Sisters in your convents, uh, some fathers in your parishes, families at home participating in the Eucharist. Thank you for allowing me to come to your home. And uh, youth, and I want to especially greet uh, uh, children from, children, little children. Uh, I, I was told that uh, children from Dallas, a class from whole class follows this mass. And so little children, uh, warm greetings to you. Uh, good morning to you. God bless you. Let's begin the sacrifice now once again, putting ourselves in God's presence, praying for all those who are suffering. We are in the midst of a pandemic. We've had a cyclone here uh, earlier in the week, and, uh, but now lots of efforts to control it. Let's pray for peace, for God's blessings. We know that he is with us. Now let's ask God's forgiveness, saying, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Can you sit for the reading? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Agrippa the king and Bernus arrived at Caesarea and greeted Festus. And as they stayed there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man left prisoner by Felix. And when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews laid out their case against him, asking for a sentence of condemnation against him. I answered them, that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused met the accusers face to face and had opportunity to make his defense concerning the charge laid against him. So when they came together here, I made no delay, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they brought no charge in this case of such evils as I supposed. Rather, they had certain points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who was dead but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Being at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go to Jerusalem and be tried there regarding them. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of the emperor, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response is, the Lord has fixed his throne in heaven. Kindly repeat, the Lord has fixed his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Our response, the Lord has fixed his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong his mercy for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. Our response, the Lord has fixed his throne in heaven. 
The Lord has fixed his throne in heaven, and his kingdom is ruling over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, mighty in power, fulfilling his word. Our response, the Lord has fixed his throne in heaven. Kindly stand as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples, and they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and went wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands. Another will dress you up and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, there is a sense of urgency in the readings. We are uh, approaching, it's, uh, the after tomorrow is Pentecost Sunday. We are coming to the end of the Easter season. In between we have the Lord ascending into heaven. Uh, Sunday we celebrated that. Many countries are celebrated on Thursday, uh, 40 days after the uh, resurrection. And some countries shifted it to Sunday. So last Sunday we in India also. Now, and then uh, today we have again... Uh, John's Gospel, but I'll talk about that. Uh, here, the king has come with his, Bernice, his sister, they say, and they came at Caesarea, and they greeted Festus. Uh, Felix was the governor or procurator of that particular place, and he was replaced by Festus. Now, to get to posit ourselves in exactly what's happening, uh, we heard that uh, the Jews the high priest, Ananias, the same one was there when, when uh, uh, Jesus was uh, condemned to death. Now he uh, was questioning Paul, and Paul is disturbing them. Paul was their collaborator first, but now he's disturbing them by all his preaching of uh, Jesus, etc. He quest and he's very bold. Paul, as we know, is indefatigable. He's uh, going from place to place, preaching in the synagogues, not frightened of the beatings and the imprisonment. And now they want to put him to death. This, let, the only way we can end this is by putting him to death. So they plot. They say, let's uh, put him to death. And uh, he was questioned. He said, spoke he's about Jesus. Uh, the tribune, the Roman people, they protected him. Last we heard it yesterday, they were fighting. And just to protect him, they put him in protective custody, as it were. And then they plotted, and we hear that, read that in the Acts, uh, they plotted, now let's, let's kill him. They made a vow, 40 of them made took a vow, that they won't eat or drink, we'll finish this man. Because he's, uh, they felt, they says he's heretic, he's breaking the Jewish law, 
he is uh, sacrilegious. He had brought a convert, Gentile convert, in the temple, and uh, he is just preaching against the law. That's the way they end. And some of them genuinely really feeling that they were doing it for God's sake. They wanted to eliminate him. So they planned. And then the Acts tell us that uh, one of the relatives, uh, son of one of Paul's sister or cousin, heard of their plot and quietly warned Paul that this is going to happen. Now Paul immediately informed the tribune. He told his nephew, nephew he says, he went, Paul is under protective custody. He's not jail. They've kept him there under guard, but for his own safety. So he told his nephew, go and tell the tribune. So he informed them. And fortunately, they were sympathetic. They understood. And so they said, don't tell anybody that we know about this. And so in the middle of the night, they took Paul from there. The plan was that when Paul was on his way for investigation, they would waylay them, waylay him, and, and kill him. So they he took them and put him in really close. He took him in a praetorium uh, and kept him over there, close to where he had to be heard. And so he was protected. And now we have uh, Paul is being brought there, and we'll hear we'll, tomorrow we will have the conclusion. Uh, now, the, the Emperor Felix, they said, discussed with him, questioned him, about, but uh, the governor, Felix, but then he could not find enough matter to condemn him to death. So he said there's nothing. And uh, so this, finally, here you have uh, Peter. We remember that he, uh, Paul has heard, uh, had a vision, and he's heard that Jesus telling him, you have got to give me witness uh, to Rome. And he doesn't know how he will do it. And so uh, what Paul does wisely when they are uh, Felix says, I'll send you back to Jerusalem and there you can, uh, they can judge you to synagogue. He was sure he would not get a fair trial. He was sure there would be something unfair. And he said, he was a Roman citizen, I appeal to the emperor. I appeal to the king. I appeal as a Roman citizen. And he had a right to do that. They could not, uh, when he felt, he had special privileges as a citizen and therefore they had to send him uh, to Rome to be tried over there. Here there's the new em governor who comes, he, he reports to uh, Agrippa the king what had happened and we hear uh, the whole thing and uh, he says the whole argument these people are accusing him is about a person named Jesus. Now these people are saying he died and Paul is saying he's alive and, and it is some silly argument they are making as what he practices uh, that uh, and, uh, I can't understand why they want to kill him. And so uh, he informs them, this whole, uh, this one small section of the reading, uh, continuation of Paul's suffering. Paul is not yet in prison. Paul has been commissioned to go and preach in Rome, which he will do, and, uh, but he also defends himself. We, fee we find here the Holy Spirit guiding the church. Holy Spirit uh, with Paul, uh, He's in trouble, the Jews don't accept him, but he's so convinced, he, they try their best, and now finally the ultimate thing, let's kill him. And tomorrow we'll have the continuation of this. But here we see Paul putting himself totally in the hands of the Lord. The whole section here is a narration uh, to the king of what has happened. The gospel passage is no longer now the conclusion, the prayer of our Lord, the last uh, talk of his before his disciples uh, with boys, and then he goes to his passion and death but here it is after the resurrection Jesus has appeared to them once again by the lake of Tiberias he has breakfast the gospel say and then he questions Simon Simon son of John do you love me Simon son of John and uh, we have G Simon embarrassingly questioned three times in front of everybody else and most likely the three, three affirmations were meant to contradict, to oppose or to make up for the three times Jesus, uh, Peter denied Jesus and therefore now Jesus asked him, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? 
you know, you want this word these also, lots of articles and lot of research and lot of discussion. Do you love me more than these other apostles? Or do you love me more than these other things? Uh, anyway, there the had to be an affirmation of Paul loving Jesus above all things. In return, Jesus gives him the keys of the kingdom. He makes him the first pope. Not John, who was so clever, so beloved. Not Paul, not yet come to the picture. But Peter was chosen as the first pope because Jesus chose him. And so today, I invite you as we think about Peter to pay, pray for Pope Francis in a particular way. Uh, the Holy Father, so many decisions to make, so much leadership to give to the church in these challenging times, in the pandemic, uh, for world peace, times of uh, difficulty for Christians in different parts of the world. Uh, but the Pope is giving courage. He went to Iraq and he gave a sign of leadership and went to encourage them. Uh, he, uh, he plans to go uh, to Budapest in September. He'll make a probably Croatia, a couple of other places also. Uh, let's pray for him, for his health, for his wisdom, for the Holy Spirit who will come. Pentecost well, Day we will receive him in a very special way. Holy Spirit to keep on guiding the Holy Father. The Pope needs our prayers. As I told you that every time I uh, leave him and say, he says, please tell your people to pray for me. And he really means it. I'm conveying his request to pray for him. Let's pray for him and pray for ourselves too, that we might receive the Holy Spirit and become worthy of being friends of Jesus. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, come to share in his divinity, who humble themselves to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness with this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended, not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts 
sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, if we may merit to be quilted on a life, praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, to you, Almighty Father, that the unity of the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us be with confidence of the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. With the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress to wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Offer the sign of peace. Christ, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Mm -hmm. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant, we pray, that this banquet by which you give us may bring us everlasting life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass then it let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Thank you for participating. Uh, have a lovely day. I want to greet once again the little children in Dallas who are participating in this Mass and do so regularly. Uh, keep well. Pray for mommies and daddies and pray for me. And God bless each one of you. Uh, let me, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Stay close to Jesus. Prayer for Relief from the Coronavirus Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses, and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.